Hello, I'm Adam Mullinger, and welcome back to part two of this best and worst Disney list. Did you miss part one? Do you not subscribe to Feud Nation? I suggest subscribing now, going back and watching that, then coming here again. Why did I split this into three parts, you ask? That's a fair question. Let's get started with number 30 on Movie Feuds. Disney turns out a lot of depressing stories, and Dumbo is no exception. It's a pretty miserable affair to watch for multiple reasons. A cute little baby elephant cub is taken from his mother due to his freakishly long ears. I know, baby elephants aren't called cubs. Calm down. Then there's the scenes of slavery and racism on display. Our title character Dumbo befriends a mouse, and they figure out a way to not only overcome his large obstacles, but to make something amazing from them. The final shot of our little elephant cub snuggling into his mother's nose at the end warms even the frostiest of hearts. I'm looking at you, Elsa. Ha 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 ha. We love Frozen here, don't we, kids? Pinocchio is a strange and interesting idea, a wooden boy trying to figure out where he belongs in this topsy-turvy world. The premise was more than enough, but then you add in his growing nose when he tells a lie, the completely bonkers and very adult drinking section of the film, and then there's the big whale finale that would have even J.J. Abrams saying, that seemed like a bit much. Looks like dreams really do come true when you wish upon a star, don't they, Pinocchio? Sorry, sorry I yelled at you, Pinocchio. It's just, the stars I'm wishing on must be broken because I've yet to wake up in the morning to Scarlett Johansson making me breakfast. The bare necessities of life will come to you. The story of a boy being raised by animals is nothing new, but the 1967 Disney animated picture does it in a far more playful and charming way. Chock full of fun songs, zany characters, and the best bear around, Baloo, put this around the halfway mark on my list. The 2016 live action CGI installment looks to be much darker, but we'll always have this classic to fall back on. You can of course also see some of the great animals pop up in the TV show Tailspin. And props to the TV show for making Shere Khan a power hungry business type, kind of a mogul, if you will. I don't know what a mogul is. I think that's, that's the right word, though. They call me Thumper. <laughs> if you listen real closely, you can still hear the sounds of children crying as they're newly introduced to Bambi. But why would they be crying, Adam? You ask. Oh, you remember. We all remember. A foggy afternoon, a grassy knoll, a chilling breeze in the air. The sound of a Winchester Model 70 rifle unloading a buckshot in the distance. A mother cut down in the prime of her life and her son forced to flee for his very well-being. We all remember! We all remember! We grow up with Bambi as he learns to walk, make friends with characters like Thumper, and even fall in love. Eventually, he will grow into a proud, strong buck and the circle of life will continue. The son becomes the father, and the father becomes the son. Superman quote. Yeah. Bring me Peter Pan! I was actually more partial to the movie Hook with Robin Williams and Dustin Hoffman, but the 1953 movie, it's still pretty solid. That says a lot as there's been almost 10 versions of this movie on the silver screen, with Pan being the most recent. The Lost Boys, the Pirates, and Peter Pan himself help carry you away from the real world and bring you into Neverland. I've also been confusedly turned on by Tinkerbell, and that hasn't really changed. Not really sure that's something I needed to share with you. Rhino! Yoink! Walt Disney Pictures, Bolt. This is probably ranked higher than it should be, even on my own personal list, and I'm sure some of you are insulted by where it's at. It's a well-made and nicely animated story that doesn't overstay its welcome. John Travolta voices the titular character Bolt with a nice, spunky attitude. Miley Cyrus thankfully doesn't come in like a wrecking ball, instead providing a more subdued vocal performance that fits the character. It's a blast watching Bolt come to the realization that he's not a super dog, nor does he need to be. The standout role goes to his sidekick, Rhino a hamster who loves to live on the edge. The ending is heartwarming and the message is nice and simple for kids. It doesn't take a super bark to be heard. <laughs> Silly old bear. As I reflect on my list in real time, I've determined that this thing is just a total cluster. The, these, these movies could be moved around in any real order. It's really only the bottom of the heap and the top 10 that matter. Everything else is just kind of window dressing. I have fond memories of Winnie the Pooh and his crack addict level of obsession with honey. Eeyore and his garbage attitude towards life. 
Then there's Piglet, a cute little pig I just want to snuggle up with and rub his belly. Yes, those are words I typed out on paper to read aloud to complete strangers. I have such a lack of respect for myself, anything's really fair game. Tigger's the best of the bunch with his superhero ability to bounce higher than a kangaroo on coals. Fine movie for all ages, but it's really for the kids here. That was lovely. Alice in Wonderland. I don't know what kind of messed up fever dream someone was on to conjure up this story. I'm not complaining. Most of the Disney films are based off previous works, novels that were typically much darker. This movie's no exception, adapted from a book that came out in 1865. How do I know this, you ask? Simple. I'm the author. The story is all kinds of crazy with giant potions, a coked out caterpillar, a creepy floating Cheshire cat, walking playing card soldiers, a mad hatter, the rabbit who's obsessed with time, He's essentially the bunny version of Flava Flav. It's a wild and visually intense narrative that doesn't rest from the opening credits to the final scene. God, how many of these do we have left? I'm running out of verbs. Hunchback in Notre Dame, how is this so high on my list? I'm not even sure I like this movie. Let's make a note that I must have originally compiled this thing when I was drunk. Let's also note that I don't drink, which makes my previous statement all the more puzzling. The Hunchback of Notre Dame, or Notre Dame, however the snooty pretentious people say it, follows Quasimodo in his quest to be accepted. This poses a few challenges considering this flick takes place in 15th century Paris. Women were only just allowed the ability to breathe there, so accepting some sort of freak show creature who leaves in a bell tower, that's asking a bit much. Hunchback features a great villain who sounds like a type of fat-free yogurt. Frollo is not thrilled with gypsies, mainly due to the fact that Esmeralda shot down his advances on her. A man has never been this sexually confused since Tinkerbell got her own spin-off movie series. Yeah, we're back on this again. A female lead? A female lead who's not white? A female lead who's not white who's not in the kitchen making food for her man who's coming home from a long day of winning? What sort of sorcery is this? It's a rare treat when a movie comes along that throws out all preconceived notions of what makes a film a success. Mulan is a fine motion picture with some great action. There is naturally a comical sidekick. There almost always is. This time it's Mushu played by Eddie Murphy. Is it Mushu? I don't care. Mulan also has a solid ballad by pop diva Christina Aguilera. This has a lot of the typical Disney tropes, but it also has a very refreshing setting and lead character. <laughs> Come on, let's have some fun. Remember how sad it was when little Bambi's mother had her face blown off? Take that pain, multiply it by a thousand. That was baby Adam's reaction to the ending of Fox and the Hound. What a miserable way to go out. The title is the story, a budding friendship between two unlikely animals. There's adventure, comedy, thrills, and sadness. And the wounds have started to heal so I can talk about this as an adult without breaking down and crying about the film. Why do you hate life, Disney? Why do you hate preciousness? Is preciousness a word even? My initial reaction to the Princess and the Frog trailer was an intense meh. Can you even have an intense meh? Meh. Second and third watchings made me appreciate Princess and the Frog far more. Plus it has John Goodman in a small role, so that automatically bumps it up a few pegs. We follow yet another female protagonist named Tiana. I would have watched an hour and a half of her busting her butt to make her dreams come true. This is a movie for all ages though, so we have to have talking animal sidekicks, slapstick gags, and an evil villain. It's all by the numbers stuff, but Tiana is so likable that it's easy to watch. The Boogeyman is a cool bad guy too. The Prince annoys the crap out of me, but I can overlook it since we are in a unique setting, New Orleans, with great songs and a string of solid side characters. I just wish Disney would have dug a little deeper on this one. One of Disney's prettiest animated films to date, if you ask me. And you did ask me, so I told you. Making Tarzan a Tony Hawk pro skater was an interesting tactic, and I think it paid off. Having Canada's gift to the world, Phil Collins score the entire soundtrack, might have been a bit much. I'm a Genesis Phil Collins fan, but a whole movie of his soft music gets a bit overpowering. Action, spectacle, nonsense, it's all there, we're all done, let's go on. This has to be one of the more adult Disney pictures, especially early on when some crew members are locked in a portion of the ship and they meet their watery fate. Michael J. Fox leads the picture as Milo J. Thatch. He and a group of specialists embark on an expedition to find the lost city of Atlantis. 
The sharp visuals look fantastic, especially paired with some great action set pieces. Alien technology and a smoking hot princess are two of my favorite things. I don't believe she's even an official Disney princess, which is a shame because she's just fantastic. And she will be mine. Oh yes, she will be mine. Wayne's World quote now. A lot of quotes going on. A stellar follow-up that takes our explorers to Australia. A bit puzzling that it took Disney 13 years to make a sequel, but I'm not complaining. This time our two mouse detectives, not to be confused with that other one, are out to save a giant golden eagle from a poacher named Percival McLeach. Never ever trust a man named Percival. They're all rot into the core. I believe this was the first animated picture to use fully rendered CGI. How do I know this? Well, I saw it in a user comment on IMDb, and that's all the proof I need. This was a financial disappointment for Disney and a bit of a cult flick. One that you should definitely check out if you've missed it. Wish I was getting paid for these promotions. Well, there you go. Another group of movies down. Next time, I'll be doing the top 15, and I couldn't be happier to get this over with. Are we even remotely on the same page with our picks? Let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Feud Nation if you haven't to join me in the final installment of this Disney Best and Worst episode extravaganza, which is how I'm referring to this for that one time only and never again. More than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. And yes, I'm aware that Frozen has not been on this list yet.